Hello and welcome to my shop. My name is George and I'm coming to you from Chelsea, Quebec. Uh, this is part six in the LED lamp uh, build. Uh, this part is the, the construction of the base and as you can see uh, it's finished. So what's coming up are a bunch of uh, short segments showing the different phases of the uh, construction and uh, let's go and finish the job. So to get a sense of how much of a base uh, I needed, I clamped a piece of scrap. This has a smaller footprint than the pieces that I have uh, available. And uh, just check to see uh, how tippy uh, the lamp was. Um, so this size or larger would be fine. To play up the semicircular and straight parts of the neck, I decided on an Art Deco style for the base. Art Deco has geometry and repetition as two characteristics, so I laid down some tombstones for the base. So the rounded fronts and straight sides talk to the neck. Now the acorn nuts are mostly decorative, but they're there because I needed a metal contact to turn the lamp on and off. I'll use one of the nuts on the front for that, and the ones at the back will pin the neck in place. Other than that, the nuts are just decoration. So I think I'm going to use these pieces to uh, make the base. So for the thin but wide pieces, I'm going to uh, resaw this hunk into uh, three plates. And uh, for the um, narrow, uh, thick pieces, there's going to be two of them, I'll chop this up into two pieces and use this hunk. So in Canada, woodworkers use uh, imperial measurement uh, almost to the exclusion of, um, of uh, metric. 
and uh, I'm quite used to using uh, Imperial as well. I understand feet and inches. I uh, have to think when somebody says uh, 30 centimeters. What is that? I don't know. Is it a foot? It is. Um, but when it comes time to adding and subtracting, especially dividing in two, uh, then I prefer a metric. So here, for example, what I want to do is put the fat pieces halfway between the skinny pieces. The skinny pieces are 209 millimeters across. The fat ones are 163. Um, so I'm going to take the difference and divide it in two to figure out the inset. Uh, so the difference is 46 millimeters and that means the fat pieces have to be inset by 23 millimeters. The calculation is simple. So there's a place for a metric in my heart. Here's a 23 millimeter spacer. Another one. To um, get everything on register, I use this uh, little uh, fixture, uh, which basically has a nice uh, right angle relationship between these three walls. So the base and these two walls are square to each other. And here are the 23 millimeter wide um, cleats uh, that I prepared to give me the right offset so that the fat sections would be indented, indented uh, symmetrically. Uh, yeah, so let's hope things all cure properly.
So I'm laying out the electronics on the uh, bottom panel. There'll be a cavity in the uh, upper portion uh, that'll make room uh, for these components. Um, and so I'll screw them down to the bottom panel over here. Now as I was uh, doing this, I realized that uh, uh, I need access to the electronics and so the bottom panel is going to be hinged to the rest of the base. And what that means is that there's now a metal object, the hinges, um, sticking out uh, the back. I no longer need the acorn nuts to make contact in order to turn the lamp on and off. I can just touch the hinge instead if I solder a wire to it. Uh, so there's been a change in the plan. I'm dropping the, um, the dome nuts, the cap nuts, the acorn nuts, call them what you will. Uh, and the only bit of metal that will be on the uh, design uh, are the hinges. Uh, I think that will make for a cleaner look. And yeah, I was a little worried that the uh, acorn nuts would be just a little bit too much. Okay, well, there she is, all finished and uh, working quite well. Now, I've referred the electronics to um, a hinge here at the back, and touching the hinge turns the uh, lamp on, touching it again turns it off, so that's working quite well. Um, one thing to watch out for is uh, in, in using LiPo batteries in series, uh, it's possible with this simple circuit that one battery will discharge uh, way too low while the other one continues to work. So I'm going to modify the circuitry in time uh, so that that's not allowed to happen because otherwise you'll lose one of the lipos uh, every so often. So the job is done. I'm happy with the results. I think it looks okay. I'm not the best designer as you can see, uh, but this will do. You know, it looks like I'm becoming a little bit of a light emitting diode lamp specialist because I realized that I'm now working on my fourth one. So this was the first one that I did a few years back. Uh, the LEDs are not very bright, uh, but it was just enough to illuminate a keyboard so that you could actually see what the uh, characters were, uh, even in the, in the dark. Um, the second one was this uh, shop rig. Um, that uh, provides a fair amount uh, of illumination. Good, good for a task, uh, just adding a little light to a, to a task. Uh, this is lamp uh, number three. And now I'm working on uh, number four. This is the uh, shroud for uh, a lamp that's going to be sitting on top of the piano. I hate painting wood. But uh, the piano is black, and so this lamp has to be black too. So it goes. So, thank you for sticking it through till here. 
share your passion.